Yo, what's going on guys? JBH here and today I am on F1 2020, the brand new Formula 1 game from Codemasters. Now I have to admit, I haven't actually driven an F1 game in a couple of years. I think F1 2017 was the last time I actually drove an F1 game by Codemasters. So it's been a while, um, but just going off of watching other people's videos and whatnot on YouTube, I can say one thing and that is that these games between now and then have come a long way. There are far more options. Um, both when you are driving the car itself and just other modes and whatnot, as, as well as the huge addition of esports over the last couple of years, the, these games really have come a long way. Um, so it's good to be back on an F1 game. I haven't had the chance to really play one over the last couple of years just through working and studying in the football industry. But finally, finally, during this lockdown, I guess um, I can get back to it and, and test it out. So in today's video, I'm going to be recreating the F1 2020 Australian Grand Prix or Formula 1 Grand Prix of Australia that was supposed to take place this year, obviously cancelled for obvious reasons. And yeah, we'll be doing a 50% race around the Albert Park circuit. I've already done practice, qualifying, set the whole career mode up. I am driving for the Alpha Tauri um, organization this season. Just thought, you know, why not? It's a new team, cool livery. Thought, just try it out. I don't really want to go straight for one of the big teams. Um, and I don't really want to start out with one of the slower teams and hang around, hang around the back. Now, one of the big features this year is obviously the drive your own team or make your own team. Now, I'm not, I haven't opted for that just because... I pride my sort of channel on being realistic, so recreating real life races, real life uh, motorsport events in real life categories, and it's safe to say that in the real world I do not have 50 billion pounds in the bank to go and create my own team, so I thought I'll just drive um, as a sort of rendition of myself within the game and drive uh, in the regular career mode for a regular team. Now if you want to skip straight to the race, please uh, go to the timestamp that you see on the screen right now. But before we get into the race, I'm just going to go through a little bit of a review, um, give my own sort of take on the game. I I think I can provide a little bit of a different insight to most other videos that review this game. I did have an open wheel career in real life, not to mention I've raced probably half of the F1 grid, um, so I have a, a couple stories for each driver. Um, but my take on the game so far, just going through practice and whatnot, the physics and realism is it's still definitely a, it's definitely a simcade game. I wouldn't call it a sim racing game, and by that I mean it's just it's not overly realistic in the way the cars handle. I mean, having said that, though, I've never driven a Formula One car in real life, so I don't really have, or well, not really in a place to say of how realistic it is. Um, but just going off watching how cars handle and also getting a feel for how open wheel cars handle in other categories, I can say that, yeah, they, they still got a long way to go, but then that's not really what the Codemasters franchise is targeting. Codemasters are targeting the wider uh, fan base, not not the expert sim races that we all like to think we are. Graphics are, are, are amazing. They're definitely slowly improving each year. Um, I am playing this on the PC, so there's really no excuse not to have it all looking as, as, good, as, uh, <laughs> as good as it can be. My two real complaints so far uh, one is still the force feedback. The force feedback is terrible. I have to admit, you know, I really don't feel like I'm driving a car. I feel like I'm driving an arcade version of a Formula One car just through the feel I get through my wheel. I mean, I've only got a G29, so by no means a fancy sim racing wheel, but even then the, the, sim, uh, the, the force feedback that comes from the game um, is nowhere near as good as the likes of, say, R Factor 2 or iRacing or some of the other sort of sim racing franchises. But then again, it is a SimK game, so you do expect that. Uh, the other thing as well with the graphics, I've never really felt like Formula 1 games feel smooth. I don't know if it's the cockpit shaking or, or camera shaking or whatnot. I drive with the cockpit view, and it always just doesn't feel like I'm driving in 60 frames per second or 100 frames per second. But definitely the immersion of feeling like you are an actual Formula 1 driver um, is the best part about this game you know i'm sitting here right now in my workstation um, which is where a driver would spend the most part of his weekend um, on, a, on an actual race weekend you know behind a data screen talking with engineers um, now i'm not actually talking about the car and whatnot but definitely the uh you know i can go through um let's just have a quick through look here so my r d tree which is something that came out a couple years back this was on f1 2017 the last game i played and it is really cool how you can sort of upgrade your car throughout the season which is what again what you do in real life you do get upgrades and and it's based on how you perform in practice so you got to do do you actually have a reason now to do practice other than, than just to set the car up um, you know, doing objectives and, and whatnot, which is, you know, which is what an F1 team does on a weekend. You know, they don't go out there and try this setup and try that setup. Uh, well, I mean, they do, but they don't tweak it like you would in other categories of motorsport. You know, an F1 team has the setup before they get to the track. They get the setup from the simulator or from past race events uh, or race meetings at that track. So they are essentially just trying out new components on the car, maybe trying out 
different setups that they can't quite replicate on the sim. Um, but yeah, so this is all really, really neat. You see, I've already purchased a couple of um, the, more the powertrain side of things, also the durability. I mean, there's also chassis and aerodynamics. So all the four, I would say, major components of an F1 car that you would upgrade throughout the season or try to upgrade throughout the season. So right now I only have uh, just one R&D sort of project in, prog uh, in progress. The progress of all the teams throughout the season. Uh, what else have we got here? That's just, I don't have a rivalry yet, so that's just going to be uh, empty. I've got my stats here, I think. And then what else we got through here? I actually probably haven't looked through here. So we got all the... And this is also another really cool feature of, you know, the way F1's trying to uh, limit costs. So we only have a set amount of certain units throughout the year. You can see I've already started to, starting to wear that internal combustion engine. Then the stats and whatnot. So, yeah, we've got we've got quite a few little features here in, in the uh, workstation. Um, again, I'm not going to try and make this video too much of, of a review because I just want to get straight into the race. The options for today's race are... Of, when I started the weekend, I did um, a medium practice. So, for those that are new to my channel, I used. To, for those that are new to my channel, I like to run all my races at fifty percent race distance, um, no matter which category it is. So we're going to be doing that today. I started out on max difficulty, which is what I always do with F1 games, and I must admit the AI seemed really OP. <laughs> so I've had to bring it down. I've actually had to bring it down again after qualifying because I was so far off the pace. I'm starting off eighteenth, uh, I think it was. So yeah, we got <laughs> we got a lot of way, a long way to go. That's another thing I'm really happy about this year is the, is the vehicle damage. Um, having not played the past couple titles, I don't actually know what it's coming straight from. But the simulation damage, you know, if I hit a wall now, I don't just bounce off. If I hit a wall, I'm losing a, I'm losing a wheel on simulation vehicle damage. Uh, race starts are on manual corner cutting. I've set it to regular. I think strict can be a little bit too strict sometimes. So I've set that to off. Park them rules on. Flashbacks are off. I like to, as I said, keep it realistic so you don't get a flashback in real life. Uh, and then all the assists are off. Driving it as real as possible. Something I did think about was um, the DRS assist just purely because I find myself in this game always looking on the wheel. You know, the practice, I'm like touching this button, that button, and I'm like, that's it. But at the end of the day, that's that's what it's like in real life. You know, F1 drivers, they're controlling a computer, not only a car. They are also controlling a computer like what a, a, um, a fighter jet would, so or a fighter pilot would. So, yeah, it's I do like that. I've kept it on. Um, and, yeah, without any further ado, let's jump into this race. First race of the season, Formula 1 Australian Grand Prix. I do have good memories of this track. I love this track. This track is absolutely insane. Um, it's just one of the last real F1 tracks. You know, it's lined with grass, gravel traps, and it's raining. No more okay. Testing, no more practice. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> I do like the way they got the. Wait, is it? Formula One World Championship. Is he walking on water? From the enormous Port Phillip Bay for today's race. <laughs> mile it's Dynamo. <laughs> Dynamo's gone down to Australia. Here, and the 16 corners could prove especially difficult in the wet conditions. Watch out for a safety car at some point during the Grand Prix. Oh, that's that's pretty wet. Uh, I didn't see that coming. I didn't actually look ahead. Um, <laughs> Here we are then, Formula One in, in the weather forecast. The fight for the world championship all starts here today. The same on the hunt for a seventh consecutive title. Okay, we don't actually Ferrari have those aircraft in Australia, by the way. <laughs> the way. We have our version of the Red Arrows, but they're all prop planes. <laughs> hoping for a stronger start this time around. And what I wonder of the Renault-powered cars. Will they be able to step forward? Maybe even onto the podium on a regular Check all. Plenty to discuss then with Anthony Davidson. He's out of hibernation too. And alongside me in the commentary box. Hibernation. <laughs> Funny thing is we went into hibernation as this race uh, was about to get on the way. How competitive these teams are relative to each other. But hopefully nobody is able to run and hide. We want to see these guys pushing to the limit all the way to the checkered flag. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid... See, this, this is what I, I actually sent an email back in like 2012, 2013 saying uh, to Codemasters, this is what they need. They need TV, a sort of TV rendition in the virtual world. They need to, you know, feel like you are an F1 driver. And that's one of my favorite aspects about... Um, 
Oh, there I am. Favourite aspects about the current Formula 1 games by Codemasters is that you just feel like you are driving in the world or you are a part of the world of F1, which I feel like F1 games lost for a while there. You know, F1 2010 was really good, F1 2011 was really good, and then it sort of went on a decline, and now it's just sort of come back up again to feeling like you are an actual uh, racing car driver in the Formula 1 world. I mean, they still, they, start, they at times do go a bit over the top, for example, saying you're on a, like, a salary, like you're, you're on this salary or you're worth this much. At the end of the day, <laughs> not all drivers are paid in Formula 1. In fact, most part are paying, not, not out of their own pockets, but through, you know, rich fathers like Lance Stroll or big sort of backing like Sergio Perez. I mean, yeah, so you do, you do actually not pay, uh, you do not get paid to drive in Formula 1 unless you are at the top like uh, Hamilton or, or Bottas or Ferrari or Red Bull or even Ricardo. So to get to that point, yeah, you have to, you have to spend quite a while, quite a while and get up through the pecking order. Anyway, so default strategy, alternate strategy. Um, we're going to go with the one stopper right now as it, I mean, it's starting in the rain and it says it's going to rain the entire way through, which is a bit of a bummer because I have no idea what this race, uh, what this car is going to handle like in the rain. It just seems like every single race I do right now is in the rain. Every single race that I do on a set of course of competition based on the real world weather is always wet. Um, of course, Park Ferme rules means that we can't change the setup. Oh, no, we can change the setup. Okay. Uh, I guess, I don't know if that's because it's raining, but um, all right. I don't know. Again, I don't even know the first thing about setting it up an F1 car in the dry, let alone in the rain. Uh, yeah, that, but this is this is again one of my other sort of um, issues with this game is the fact that there is very minimal you can do with the car, and I, I get they're trying to keep it simple for the wider market. But you know, for real racing enthusiasts, I think they should do what other sim racing games or simcade games do, which is have a very basic version. And then if you want to go into a more advanced version of the setup, you can do that. Uh, for example, the, the amount you can change on an F1 car compared to what we have available to us, there are like oh, maybe six times as many things you can change. I mean, just suspension alone, you know, that's just, I'm assuming that's just the spring rate, but you know, you got the shocks, um, damp is you got the third spring that's often in an F1 car. Um, and then just like brake bias, you know, I've only got one sitting on the brake bias, you know, brake bias and F1 car changes as, it, as, it, as you go through the braking zone. As you can imagine, uh, if you're going from 200 miles an hour to 30, the amount of force you have on the car itself when you hit the brakes is a lot more. So you can stamp on the throttle and uh, stamp on the stamp on the brake a lot harder. And then by the time you actually get to the end of the braking zone where there's a lot less downforce on the car, you will end up locking your tires. That's why F1 cars are designed to actually the brakes sort of change the bias as you go into the corner and actually change the the pressure that you apply to the brake so that the driver doesn't have to go bang and then s completely come all the way off the brakes um but anyway yeah that's just a small sort of aspect of how in depth these f1 cars are from a technological um standpoint so yeah uh very minimal um i think i'm gonna maybe add a little bit of downforce for the rain just because that's what you do um again i've actually got the core part of the setup from a setup on on the steam um workshop so I, I again i just don't know this game well enough i don't know the physics on how it responds to setup changes but we'll leave it at that um and yeah i think there's not really much else we can do in the race with a with a wet sort of plan i don't i, I change the fuel well, we got 29 laps go half a lap more just so we can run the maybe the first lap or, or whatever in in the rich mode setting and yeah here we go let's get away on this formation lap um all right so that's right, interesting this is all looking a little bit different so um just do a little practice start here okay our system checks are we on inters. We need to stay in formation and start bringing the car up to temperature, please. Get some load into the tyres and work the brakes. We want them nice and warm by the end of the lap. I'm going to try and uh, talk as much as I can, but I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to concentrate on this one because this is my first F1 race in a while, not to mention my first race on F1 2020. Um, as far as I can see, the wet graphics do look pretty cool. I mean, I'm not quite sure about the... You know, that's one thing I can say is I have driven an open wheel car in the rain and this is not what it looks like through a U-Visor. Um, it's amazing how quickly the spits or the, 
I don't even know, the drops of rain actually just fly off the side because your visor's curved, if you imagine. So it literally just flies off. You ever get up to speed um, in a road car, like maybe you're on the highway or something, and you just see the drip start flying off to the point where it's like you don't really, well, you, you still need windscreen wipers, but yeah, it's, this is not what it looks like. Oh, where am I going? <laughs> it's been a good, great formation, that. So, yeah, we're going to take it slowly. Definitely one of the, the new... Well, I don't know. It's not new because I think it was in last year's version. But something I'm trying to get used to is the ERS, um, the deployment and how you can actually, you know, hit the overtake button. So I'm still trying to get a little bit, well, a little bit used to that. But I'm more used to that. I can't even English right now. Now, we've definitely seen a couple Australian Formula 1 Grand Prix throughout the year that have been wet. I went to this race in 2011, back when, uh, back when we had the V8s, or the F1 had the V8s, and that was that was unreal, I must admit. So, I don't know why. Oh, this is on overtake, but... Anyway. Uh, here we go, 29 laps. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a long one, especially in the rain. It's really hard to pass around here in real life, so it's good to see whether it's easier in the actual race itself, uh, in, in the virtual world, I should say. Anyway, here we go, lining up. First race of the season. Oh, terrible getaway. Couldn't quite see the lights there, but... Oh my god, I'm just wheel spinning the spray. I can't see anything. I did have the... Uh, I forgot to turn the lights off, so... <laughs> I can't actually see any <laughs> anything off the start. Um, I guess the Urz is on automatic right now. A couple spots here. Squeeze! Man, the spray is terrible. I cannot see squat. Just going off pure memory right now. I have done thousands of laps around this track, so <laughs> no excuse to not know where I'm going. Oh, oh hello. Yoo. No real point putting it in the rich mode right now because because I just uh, <laughs> well I'm just wheel spinning so I'm just wasting that fuel anyway uh, take all that curb just because I can't see where I'm going but yeah we have held position so that's a good start I'm just feeling it out right now feeling the grip levels this is literally my first race in F on F1 2020, first race in the rain, first race on an F1 game in a while. Uh, got a, a Haas in front of us. Just gonna lean it out for a sec here. Save some fuel that we can use once we do actually get in clear space. Oh my Jesus! Kick it out. I do like that, but it's savable. You know, it's not like I racing where if you get loose, you just die. First race. There's always a couple DNFs. Oh, this is good. I, I can barely go flat to the throttle. Slippery! Be careful I don't wear these bad boys out. Uh, come on, Joseph, sort it out. Alright.
So I, I take it the Urz is on overtake for the first couple of laps until, well, until you take over from it. Because right now it's not letting me change it. This is not easy. You know, Formula One games in the past have been renowned for being somewhat easy to drive, but man, I'm <laughs> I'm struggling right now. Uh, as long as I don't get beaten by the, uh, the by the Williams, and that's all that matters. Still in a massive learning phase right now. to see you though. Keeping with the pack though, so be happy so far. See if we can get Grosjean out on this uh, sort of next section. Ah, just too nervous. Don't want to spin it coming off of that quick left right. So sketchy off of there. through them a little bit. Especially the rear. It's got to be more gentle than those rear tyres. Just so easy to wheel spin. I'm generally like through this whole section not going full throttle at all. Definitely need to try and get past these guys in front of us because they're holding us up a little bit now. Man. Doesn't feel like it. <laughs> Not for, not for long here. I'm going to struggle. But I mean, this is realistic. You would be wheel spinning in fifth gear. The amount of torque these cars have this in this modern era. I do like that as well. The way you, if you hit a curb, it will send the car slightly off uh, off balance, which is something that. I haven't found in past F1 titles. So, like the way the car sort of handles and responds to curbs, it, you know, somewhat acts realistic, but at the same time, it just doesn't feel through the wheel that it's very realistic. So again, force feedback, definitely something they need to work on in, uh, in F1 2020, but I'm really just trying not Trying to work the fronts a little bit more, drive it off the front tyre instead of the rears like it was the first couple of laps, because definitely the gap on the car by using up too much rear tyre in the first couple of laps. I just can't seem to get close enough to make him lunge right now. Oh uh, no, get off that sausage curb. I can't see where it is there, that's the problem. <laughs> Thing is, I gen generally thought this race was going to be dry. I'm shocked it's it's wet. I, if I'd known that, I probably would have done something else. I've gone a little bit more ham in qualifying. I basically screwed up my qualifying that big time. Uh, that's why I'm so far down the back. But okay, right, so only race one.
I know I've seen some drivers in esports just go through the fuel mixture like it's crazy in terms of going up and down and whatnot. But I'm just going to leave it at what it is right now. I'll use the fuel when I want to. I'm not going to go that crazy. Yeah, it's, in, it's in eye racing, but it is funny the um, the Earth side of things actually brought back memories of driving the LMP1 car on uh, iRacing the way I was sort of using the overtake here and there in practice and whatnot. I don't... Actually, it's gone off now, so... No, take that down. Alright, so now it's up to my control, so... I don't know if we're going to have the same pace now we haven't got the overtake. I wish I could have had control of it earlier because I wouldn't have used it since we're stuck behind these cars. I would have liked to have used it in other places. Might recharge it a little bit here and have another crack at Grosjean. But I'm not consistent enough to really get close and make a challenge. Press the wrong button again. Pit stop information. Okay, you only have to stop once now. One stop left. Your pit window opens in eight laps time. Eight laps, okay. Still getting used to the whole voice command thing. I'm trying. Struggling for tire right now. I mean, it's somewhat realistic. In, in real life in F1, you would not be able to pass just through the aero wash. I don't think it's aero wash that's hampering me right now. It's just me not going all out quick enough. Let's see how we can get through this sector, shall we? that bollard. Um. It's a bit wet. Uh, I should have had a lunge there. See if we can get him going into turn number whatever it is, three. Uh, nine. Just can't get that traction down. I know we're in 18th, but this is a lot of fun, I must admit. Again, if you are new to my channel, I don't really pride myself on going out and being unrealistic, you know, diving up cars and potentially wrecking myself out. I just like to be as realistic as possible. I like to have my races 50% race distance um, and try not to drive as unrealistically as you can drive on these F1 games, especially watch some of the esports guys just pounding over curbs and whatnot. Pretty crazy, but yeah, I'm struggling here. What's up? It's 
some information on Gasly. They seem to have an issue. Oh, that's our teammate. It's not good. All right, let's try this again. Close enough. Ah, come on, Joseph, grow some balls. About time, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's too much curb. <laughs> oh, it's only taking me 10 laps. Just, oh, it's again, too much curb. I'm doing a bit of a carding here. <laughs> you know, grass, grass in every single corner. Usually in qualifying, I was, or in practice, I was really getting on that overtake button as soon as I come out of the some of these corners, but in the rain, there's just no point. I'm not close enough, we'll try and do the same as what we did last lap. Okay, the weather's certainly eased off for the time being, but we've still got a lot of standing balls around there. We're happy for you to stay out on the inters for now. All right, finally. All right, I tell you what, let's see if we can run in rich, get away from these guys behind us. Oh man, it's getting hot in here. <sighs> English summer. Alright, so 12 laps into the race, 16th, gained a couple, still nowhere near as aggressive as probably what I should have been. It's very soft in the, in the first sort of half of this race, but we've got a long way to go. Never know, safety car might throw a spanner in the works. Yeah, just too cautious, I would say. A bit of safe than sorry. It's actually 
The track's got a lot more grip than what it did at the start. I don't know if that's just me getting more used to it, but... You got another horse. Kevin Magnuson. We definitely have way more pace than these cars around us, though. Actually, that's our teammate just in front of him. Oh, big move. Oh, hold on to it. Alright, so he must be getting the stop before Gasly. That's good. Let's see if we can undercut him. Usually the driver in front gets preference. But they know I'm faster. Instead of trying to use your overtake button more, it's time to utilize some of this energy. Yeah, I'm actually gonna save it and try and just use it the entire outlap, see if we can undercut him that way. Instead of having to pass him on the track, pass him in the pits. What we do need to do is save some fuel. We've gone a little bit over the top with the fuel usage before. Ooh, lock up. Alright, that was way too cautious, Joseph, but at the end, it's the first time entering the pits in the rain, you know, I didn't want to get a penalty and have our race ruined. Perfect. 2.9, a little bit slow, but how about? Pit strategy complete. See these tires through to the end now. All right, let's just abuse this overtake button. No, you twat! Ah, went into that corner so much faster than I was anticipating. Uh, okay, we've lost our undercut then. Let's just try and stay ahead of whoever the hell it was that was behind us. Magnuson. Come on, Joseph. And I am sweating. Oh, 
Where's my overtake button now? Stop me I'm using it again. Maybe I used up too much on that last lap or this lap. I need to go and have a look and see how that thing works. Yeah, so this lap should. Yeah, let me use again. Uh, well, we came out ahead of Magnuson, but I knew after those mistakes that we wouldn't get the uh, get the undercut done on our teammate. Done that. What an idiot. Uh, I knew I was going to do that eventually. Oh, uh, Joseph, you are a prick. Oh, well. First race. I don't mind making the odd mistake in this one. Just got a little bit too over eager with the throttle. I mean, we're in six, but it just was kicking its ass out on the overtake button. Oops. Right, well, this is going to screw us over. We're going to have a, no chance of getting anywhere near the points. Oh, what a prick! Absolute imbecile. Exit, exit now. Oops. <sighs> oh well. We've got more racing to do, I guess. If the comeback is on. All we could really use right now is a safety car. That would be a dream. not make the same mistake again. I'm going to have to lean it out here so we can get some of that fuel back. Uh, 19 seconds behind. That's a long way to try and not finish last. A uh, good chance to sort of practice again, getting used to the errors. Again, as I said for the race, it's, it's definitely a bit of a nostalgia rush because it's like going back to the iRacing LMP1 days when it first came out, getting used to that sort of, um, I forgot what, it, what we used to call it now, the battery, using the battery just on the button every now and then. Simple mistake as well. I can't believe I did that. Just had to be a little bit more patient. I think I was so in, like, I was so no, sorry, so patient at the start of the race that I didn't really utilize the speed of the car. And then I tried to go a little bit harder and just completely ruined everything. Okay, 10, 11 laps to go. It's it all order to get past the Williams, but we'll give it a shot. Need a safety car, please someone fence it. <laughs> uh, I need a safety car so bad. Please, someone stop. I mean, it's raining for God's sake, and it's not to mention it's the first race of the year, so <laughs> cars should be breaking down. 
Please, give me a safety car. Oh, man. What I need is a freaking towel. I'm sweating. We've caught up a good... I don't know, eight seconds since the pit stop. Um, when we had that incident. But not making any more inroads. Big inroads is what I would have liked. I'm shocked we haven't been lapped yet. Ugh, I suppose it's only 20 laps into the race. The track is drying, but it's going to take a while to clear the standing water off the line. Don't start thinking about slicks just yet. Gap to teammate ahead is 33.4 seconds. Uh, really? We were just behind him, but how's it? Oh yeah, yeah. Never mind. Uh, we did lose a lot of time with that having to make that pit stop. I didn't realise that's how much we lost. These tires looking. Not too bad. Not more even was than what they were in the first stint. Now I'm sort of driving it a little bit straighter, but not really attacking right now. I'm just trying to not make any more major mistakes because we are lap by lap getting closer to the Williams but I'm just hoping we can get there before the end okay, clear. oh there was a dab of a yellow flag don't tease me like that don't tease me like that I need a safety car don't just show a yellow flag and oh <laughs> good riddance yeah, it is. I'm not much of a Hamilton fan, I have to admit. I used to be. When, when he first started Formula 1, I, he was my favourite driver, but fame took hold of him and his personality became really dull and just, uh, just not the same personality athlete he once was. But that's good, that's a free spot for us. Not that, you know, it really means much of a difference. Oh, yellow flag. Okay, you're catching the car ahead, but Come on, safety car. Come on, surely he stopped in the middle of the track. Oh, Vettel's out as well. Wow, they're all dropping like flies now. That's interesting. There's five laps of fuel remaining. Let's see if we can get both of the Williams in the next five laps. Should, at the pace we're catching these guys, make quick work of them, but I swear how hard it was for me to make a pass in the early running of the race. It's definitely slowly getting slightly grippier as this race goes on. Said a purple first sector, that's interesting.
moving in the braking zone. That was always my pet hate racing, especially in real life when there's money on the well, real money on the line. You know, you lose a front wing because some idiot in front of you <laughs> decides, "Oh, I'm going to block you now that you're diving up the inside." As we go into the braking zone, that was always my absolute pet hate. Okay, we got one of them. Alright, so objective complete. Get back in front of the Williams. <laughs> There's three laps of fuel remaining. So basically back where we were, <laughs> where we started. Oh man and I am sweating. Alright, last lap. It's been a long one. It's been a hot one, man. I'm really sweating in here. We've gone forward, we've gone backwards and back forward again, but all in all, really fun. I mean, I know we're nowhere near the pointy ends, so it's probably not the most entertaining race to watch, but no, we, this has been really good to be back on, a, on an F1 game. Definitely more F1 2020 content to come. And check out some of the new tracks like Vietnam and... Uh, what the other one was now, but uh, oh, Zandvoort, that's it. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that. So stay tuned for more throughout 2020 during this lockdown. I mean, lockdown in the UK has pretty much been, um, well, for the most part, um, retracted. But for people like me working in the football industry and academies, is uh, yeah, I ain't going nowhere anytime soon. <laughs> Which is kind of sad, but anyway, it does mean I get more time to play games. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing other bits and bobs, but yeah, just whilst uni's off and works on furlough, I'm just going to wait for everything to hopefully kick back into action. Um, but no, this, this has been a fun race nonetheless. Yeah, even though I would prefer this race to probably be in a dry, it's been good to see what the F1 2020 game is like in the wet. Alright, across the uh, around the final corner across the line. 16th in our first race. Definitely had a chance to get towards that top 10 but made that stupid stupid mistake. Can't believe I did that. I was driving so patiently in the moment I was like, okay, I'm going to give it some. Screwed up but driver of the day, Kimi Rakanen. I do love this Alfa Tauri though. So Charles Leclerc will get the win. Tell me, Ant, how did they God. manage to achieve this win? I think that's smart. He has come so fast. I remember racing him in the what was called the CIK FIA sort of um, KF3 category back in the day. And he was he was good. He was good in carts, unlike some of these other, other some of these other drivers that made it in Formula One. He was very, very good in karting. Um, so Alex Albon as well, remember, well, in fact I've raced this entire podium. Verstappen I would say was the best that I raced against out of all three of these. You know, that entire era of junior karting, those three were all really good, but Max I would say is, was the most talented driver I raced against. Just, you'd follow him and he, you'd follow him and he'd just take corners like you wouldn't believe, especially in the gearbox so side of things. Right. It's interesting, we actually had a lot more pace um, than what I thought we did. Look, 36.3 was our quickest lap. A second quicker than our teammate and actually quicker than Max Verstappen, quicker than Ricardo. You know, we, we had some pace in this race. All right, back to the team HQ. Um, but yeah, all in all, I think definitely went out of the box too soft in today's race. Didn't quite, you know, get up to speed as quickly as what I should have. Need to get used to the ERS a little bit more. Again, I, I'm not quite used to that yet in F1 2020. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> as I said throughout the videos, it's like literally iRacing going back to using the battery on the LMP1 cars. So getting back in the rhythm of, you know, using it coming out the corners, you know, I, there was times where I was like, oh shit, I left it on, forgot to stop it before I went into the braking zone or it's a toggle, it's not a hold um, button. 
I'm sure you can set it the other way, but yeah, so definitely need to get used to that, that, that a little bit more, if I could get it out, um, and optimize that a little bit better. But yeah, no, this game this year is insane. I'm really, really liking F1 2020. That race was, even though not the best result, so much fun. And next, we're going to head to Bahrain. So definitely stay tuned for that race number two of this 2020 season. I'm going to try and do as many videos as I can um, while still incorporating some of the other content that I do on R-Factor 2 and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely going to be back on F1 2020 shortly because that was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, also stay tuned if you're into your NASCAR gaming. I'm going to be checking out NASCAR Heat 5 here in a sec. And yeah, see what that is like this season. Hopefully um, much better physics because that is the biggest issue with that game. It's just the outright physics of the NASCARs in that game are terrible. But anyway, yeah, moving on. Thanks guys for tuning in. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more action in 2020. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.